Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the new CSX from Smith & Wesson, chambered in 9mm. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. You'll find a link that you can sign up for Big Daddy Unlimited. They actually have things in stock and usually at a lower price than other places. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. This is the latest entry by Smith & Wesson into the now quite crowded Micro 9 high capacity territory. So that crowded market does set the bar kind of high. One of the things that differentiates this from a lot of the other ones that are out, most of them are all striker guns, and even the ones like the Ruger that was classically a hammer gun has moved to striker, and this is a single action 1911 style. I mean, obviously it doesn't look like a 1911, but it's that single action style, kind of a flat trigger style like you would have in a 1911. So this is going to appeal to the people that like to do cocked and locked. It's also a metal frame gun. So it's an aluminum alloy gun and stainless steel slide and stainless steel barrel. So there's a lot of things that to like about this but there's a few things that are kind of going to be important because if you are used to a 1911, there's a few things you're used to, and that's the type of person that would be interested in carrying something like this. So why wouldn't you just get a micro 1911? Well, it's got a lot more capacity. This holds 10 and 12. So the flush magazine that comes with it holds 10 rounds, and it fits nice and flush. Kind of gives you, if I get my hand up in there, kind of gives you a two and three quarter finger grip. And then if you put in the included 12 round magazine, it's pr almost a three finger grip. And that 12 round magazine doesn't really increase the height a whole lot. So effectively you've got a double stack in here in basically the footprint that would normally be like a single stack 1911. So that's the real attraction. So why would I get this over a micro 1911? Obviously it's the capacity. It has a few other modern features that you're don't get on a typical 1911 style gun. It has a toggle in the trigger for inertial safety and it's a hinge trigger instead of a pushback. I think that's going to kind of be important when we get to talking about the trigger. And it also has a plunger style or a piston style drop safety. So it is a drop safe weapon. You carry it cocked and locked with the safety on just like you would a micro 1911. Go to use it, flip the safety off, and the safety actually operates quite smoothly. It's easier to turn off than to put on. It's kind of getting the angle on it right to go on is a little more difficult, but not bad. But sweeping it off with your thumb is very smooth. I kind of have to make sure I turn my thumb to catch it with my knuckle to turn it on. But once I'm wanting to turn it off, pretty much no matter how I sweep it, it comes off. It's got serrations at the front, kind of that almost fish scale, but instead of being serrated like the typical Smith & Wesson fish scales, they're a little bit straighter. They're easy to get a hold of, front and rear, and the slide is relatively light. It's not super, super light, but it's lighter than many, so it also might be a good choice for somebody that has weaker hands. And like even like a 1911, you can always thumb the hammer back to make the slide a little bit lighter. It does have quite nice sights. They're really bright three-dot sights. The sights are metal. There's a little bit of serration on the top to cut glare. And the sights are designed kind of like a shelf. So you could use the rear sight to cycle the gun if you needed to or wanted to. So there are quite a few nice features on it. And while I've got it turned this way, you'll see that the slide stop, slide release, and the safety are ambidextrous. Magazine release is not, but it comes in the box with one that you can replace yourself to reverse it. So you can set the magazine release at this, whatever side you want. And it comes with one additional back strap. So this kind of wraparound piece comes off and you replace it with this if you want it smaller or you can use the one that this one came with the larger one on it. So it's, you know, it's kind of up to you which way you want to go. And it comes with this little kind of a button thing that you would stick up in here to release the back strap so that you could take the back strap off. So everything you would need to take the back strap off and swap it comes with it, as well as doing the magazine release. So fairly easy to get it configured for either hand. Now size, of course, is one of the attractions for something like this. It's 6.1 inches long. It's 4.6 inches tall with the flush magazine in it. 
and it weighs 19.5 ounces. So it's not ridiculously heavy. It's heavier than some of the polymer ones, but again, you're getting that metal frame, which a lot of people like. From a size comparison, it would compare with something like this P938. This would probably be one of its more significant competitions, the Six Sour P938. And you'll see that they're roughly the same size. The 938 is a little bit shorter if I set it up like this. It's a little bit shorter, but keep in mind, seven rounds in this flush mag, or you can get uh, eight rounds in the extended mag, 10 rounds in the flush mag. So that little extra bit of height is giving you a significant amount of capacity that you don't have otherwise. Now taking, comparing it to other things that are common right now that aren't single action cocked and locked, you've got something like the Shield Plus, and Shield Plus is a little bigger. It's a little bigger in every direction, even if you factor in the beaver tail. Now it looks a lot bigger than it really is because you have to factor the beaver tail. That is part of the size of it. So even though it looks a lot bigger than, than the uh, CSX, it's not super bigger and it's only a hair taller and you've got 10 and 12 in this as well. And then the other com competition that this would fit into and it would help if I actually kept the right one on the table, we're talking about a CSX here, is the new Max 9 by Ruger. And this also is roughly the same size. The Ruger is a little bit thicker. But overall, there's a lot of guns in this size category. Ruger is also a little taller. Ruger has similar capacity. So from a size perspective, thickness and overall size and weight, they've done it right. They, they kind of hit the mark on that because now if you're wanting to carry a single action style gun, you can have the capacity like everybody else does, which that's been, a, other than the cocked and locked, you either like it or you don't. There's nothing wrong with it, but you either like it or you don't. The capacity of the 1911 style variants has really been the big detractor when you compared it to all the various polymer wonders. Now with an MSRP of 609, it comes in a little pricier than some of the competition. But, you know, they're a polymer, this is a metal frame gun. Most of the metal frame guns are a little bit more expensive. Overall, it's a nice gun, but it's got one drawback, and I think this is kind of a significant one. This trigger is not that great. So the little toggle disappears, that becomes irrelevant. You come up onto the wall, and it's really stiff. And then it breaks. It's a super short break. And when it does break, it breaks nice and clean. But the weird thing about it is this trigger would actually be better if it had a little creep because the amount of travel that's on it, it's hard to tell if it's not wanting to go because it's not going to go or if it's not wanting to go because you just haven't hit it just quite hard enough. Cycle it. Reset is super short on it, so the reset is quite nice. And then again, you're on a stiff wall that doesn't have any give, so there's no indication that this trigger isn't locked or somehow not going to fire like you forgot and left the safety on and then it breaks. What I found when I took this to the range, when I first tried to use it, it had some trouble with it. Number one, the trigger actually was not going to work. No matter how hard I pulled it, it didn't want to go. And uh, the first time I did it, I backed off fairly quickly. I've got fairly strong hands. I can break things if I'm not paying attention, so I may back off a little sooner than somebody else might. But I actually checked it, and no, that trigger wasn't going to go. Unloaded it, cycled it a few times, the trigger started working. Then the trigger worked after that. It has lightened up some after it's cycling. The other problem we had with this initially is the slide stop slide release wouldn't work at all. If you tried to use the slide stop slide release to re release the slide, it would fail to feed and would hang up. That behavior went away after a few mags. Now I'm not going to ding it for that. I give a lot of guns the courtesy of a break-in period. If it gets working within 50 to 100 rounds, you know, life moves on. So I'm not making that a negative. But the trigger itself, if you're used to 1911s, you are used to the short travel, you are used to a nice wall, but it's a real easy light wall. And this gun doesn't have that. Now, hopefully as I run it more, it will break in some and maybe start to approach that nice light wall that you get with a 1911. But I did find at the range that trigger did contribute to having a harder time staying on target. Because I'm pulling on it and it's not wanting to go, and then all of a sudden it goes. So, and then, but it doesn't travel very far. So, really, the only thing that I'm finding disappointing on this gun, because it's got a lot of cool features, 
is I expected the trigger to be better. I expected a 1911 trigger, and that's not what I'm getting with this. Now, the trigger was a thing at the range. There is another thing that, and, and you guys, if you've watched the channel before, you know I don't like tool-based takedown procedures. And this one's got a tool-based takedown procedure. So to take this down, you have to bring the slide back, and you have to line up a little half moon, which is no different than a 1911, except usually it's at this end. But a lot of guns have that. But it's kind of buried down in there, so it's kind of hard to see. So it's right about there. And then while you're doing that, holding that slide in place, you have to use actually a punch to push this little pin. And I think the slide moves, so I don't think the pin's going to go. Nope, it didn't. So you have to get that alignment just right. I'm going to pull the hammer all the way back. That'll make it a little easier. You get the alignment just right, and then you push this pin through, and then it'll come apart. Now it kind of comes apart fairly easy after that, but there is no way to do this without a pin. And if you look at the end of this, if I can get it on camera, it kind of looks like a little gear. It's got little splines, and those go into the retention. There, you can see it now. So when you go to put it back together, it's important that you not force it if it doesn't want to go, because if you bend or flare these splines, you're going to have a bigger problem with it than having to use a punch to take it apart. It's got a nice designed recoil spring. It's captive, and it's steel. So the recoil uh, spring and guide rod assembly is really nicely done. The barrel is 3.1 inches. It's got a, what I always call a machine polished feed ramp, so you'll see some lines on it, but I don't believe this feed ramp is the reason we were having that initial failure to feed issue. I think that was related to some other mechanical break-in, because that completely went away. After that went away, the thing just fed and ran. And it is a nicely machined conventional rifling barrel. It has a kind of a, almost a hint of a crown, but not quite. When you look at it from this angle, it looks like a crown, but then when you take it around the side, it's kind of flat. Overall, it's a well-done barrel, and it has the hoop style that you're seeing on a lot of the micros as opposed to the actual little toggle that you see on 1911s. When you get into the slide, there's the drop safety plunger, and everything is well machined and well done in here. Just looking at the slide by itself, you would almost think that this was a striker-fired gun, other than the fact there's not a striker assembly, because there's not a lot going on in here. When you move down to the frame, it's got nice, long, robust rails, fire control groups back here, and it has decent rails at the back. So it's a nicely machined, well-set-up frame. Overall, I, I, I like the design of it. I just, I'm not a fan of that takedown procedure because kind of having to almost have three hands and eyes on both sides of your head to be able to get things just right for it to come apart. Now, happily putting it back together is a little bit easier. You line things up. And like a 1911, as you bring it back, you, you line the barrel hoop up with that hole. Then you take the pin and capture it. Then you can pull it back and kind of adjust it till the, that half moon is in place and then give it a push and it should just snap in. If you go in and start pushing and it's not going, don't use force. Either you haven't gotten this aligned right or that spline is not quite lined up so kind of wiggle it a little bit. But generally getting it back together, this goes back together more easily than it comes apart. I wish they had done it more like a 1911 where once you had that exposed there was a little bump that was pushed out that you could push it. But I know why they did it. It's so they could have the ambi slide stop slide release. So they could have a slide stop slide release on this side. There may have been a better way to accomplish that, but that takedown, eh, not, not so nice. Other than that, it, it's actually kind of a nice gun. It's kind of, it's well manufactured. It does address an area that people are interested in is bringing that capacity to the people that like the 1911 style cocked and locked and, and that crowd is a, still a decently large crowd and to each his own if that's what you like it's nice to see guns coming out that address that but in all reality most of the micro 9 polymer wonders are going to do a little bit better job of being a small light compact high capacity carry gun
Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Getter, pretty much everywhere now. And thank you.